look for a yarn choice now. If you can, if you're knitting for a cold climate, choose animal fibers for your hat. And by this, I mean wool, alpaca, cashmere, mohair, those kinds of animal fibers, okay? These are your best choice for a warming hat because they are warming, they are insulating, and they also breathe. So it means that if your head gets too warm, there's still breathability in it and you're not feeling, you don't get all clammy. Um, the other great property of these animal fibers, and wool in particular, sheep's wool, is that it wicks the moisture away. So if you're wearing your hat and it gets wet, rain, snow, for example, quite common in the winter, uh, they'll keep the moisture away from your head. So you're kept warmer that way as well. You're kept warm and you're kept dry. If you can't do certain fibers, our Amy cannot wear wool. Silk is a fantastic choice. Silk is a fiber that uh, very few people have sensitivities to. Most people can wear silk and it has all of the wonderful warming properties that wool has. In fact, it's slightly warmer than wool even. So if you are knitting for someone who doesn't wear wool, uh, or you're just knitting for yourself and you deserve a treat. Uh, <laughs> silk is an excellent option for a hat. And it is, of course, uh, delicious to work with as well. And it's a nice way, a hat is a nice way of using a yarn that might be a little bit too, too luxurious or a little bit too expensive for a larger project. Cotton. Let's talk about cotton. Cotton is not a good fiber for a winter hat because it's not warming. It doesn't have that insulation property. It's great for a summer hat, absolutely. It feels good uh, in the summer in warm weather and it does breathe, but it doesn't keep you warm. The other challenge with cotton is that it, well, something that makes it a great towel makes it a terrible hat in that it absorbs moisture. So a cotton hat in the rain is gonna get wet and it's going to stay wet. And if the temperatures are very cold, so if it's maybe not rain and if it's snow, it's going to get wet, stay wet, and potentially even freeze. So I would definitely consider a cotton for a warm weather hat, but not a good choice for a winter hat. And synthetics, we're often attracted to synthetics because they're bright colors, good prices, right? And a synthetic, fabric, like a hat knitted out of an acrylic yarn to be specific, can feel warm. It feels warm because that fabric's quite, it doesn't breathe as much, so it will retain your head's own heat. The challenge with that is because it doesn't breathe, it retains your head's own heat. And if you get too warm, it's not going to breathe in the same way. Um, the other reason a synthetic hat may not be ideal in cold weather is uh, in addition to potentially feeling a little bit clammy because it's holding the heat and holding, yeah, sweaty head. It can happen, right? But also if it gets wet, it stays wet. So again, you could be running into issues there with a, a wet, cold, and potentially even freezing hat. So synthetics, not necessarily a good choice for that reason either. At least not for the main hat. I said main hat. What do I mean by main hat? Well, if you're knitting for someone who lives in a very cold climate or is outside a lot of the time and needs good head protection or needs head protection because of fiber sensitivities, right? Someone who couldn't wear wool directly against their head there's a clever way of addressing the issues. And that is to make a double layer hat, to make a lining. So you can use a warming outer fiber, mohair, for example, and I love mohair, but it is a fiber that a lot of people are sensitive to. So you could make an outer hat in mohair and then you could line it. You could line it with a fleece or flannel, like a sewn lining, or, you could line it with a hat made out of something that your intended wearer can wear. OK, 
Okay, so you could put a cotton or a synthetic hat inside a wool hat solves a whole load of problems. It's comfortable. You're not going to set off any fiber sensitivities. You've got the double layer already for extra warmth and using a maximally warm fiber like a mohair or an alpaca or a wool, something that someone might have a sensitivity to on the outside. I do this a lot with hats made out of the Icelandic lopi wool. I love that. It is an incredibly warm wool, but it is not exactly what you would call soft. And when I'm making a lopy hat for someone, particularly someone who maybe doesn't have a lot of hair, there are some people in my lives who don't have a lot of hair anymore. Uh, so what I will do with a hat made out of lopi is I will line it so that it feels comfortable and is even warmer. And that will take them through the worst of the polar vortex. Now, if you are knitting with uh, a cotton, for example, okay, whether a lining hat or whether a summer, like a stylish summer hat, there are a couple of things you need to take into, take into account. Cotton is a very different fiber to knit with than wool. Wool has elasticity. Animal fibers have a little bit of give to them. Cotton is much stiffer. It's true of synthetics as well. They don't have any natural stretch to them. They don't have any natural give. If you've knitted with cotton or synthetic, you'll know this because it just feels a little bit stiffer on your needles. The stitches don't move as easily. What that means is that there's not as much give in the knitted fabric either. And so there's not as much give when you're wearing it. And if we go back to fit for a second, we're choosing a hat size based on negative ease, right? We're expecting the hat to stretch to fit. With wool, because the, it's not just the knitting, not just the fabric that stretches, but it's actually the fiber that's stretching. With wool, we can rely on both of those stretch factors to help the hat stay on and to help the hat fit well. But with cotton, we don't have the stretch in the fiber. So when you're thinking about negative ease, the wool hat is gonna be a little bit smaller even than a cotton hat. Put another way, your cotton hat should be closer in size to your head, right? So if you're taking a pattern that's designed for wool and knitting it in cotton, you would choose a size a little bit larger than you normally would. The other thing about cotton is that it doesn't have the same bounce back in that the ribbing, for example, won't bounce back in the same way. If it stretches out when you're wearing it over the day, because things do stretch out over the day, right? With wool, it bounces back to its original shape. And so your the ribbing holds its shape a lot longer. The ribbing holds its bounce a lot longer. With a cotton yarn, make your ribbing a little bit tighter. So although the hat itself might be slightly bigger, what I'm going to do is I'm going to knit my ribbing on a needle that's smaller to just help it hold its shape a little bit better. I might even do a twisted ribbing to help it hold its shape a little better. So you can absolutely use cotton in a pattern that's written for wool when you're making a hat, but make a couple of accommodations and the hat will fit better and it will last longer. If you're making hats out of silk or alpaca, they have the stretch that wool has, but they don't have that bounce back so the ribbing can get stretched out over time so I would make the same suggestions with your ribbing for your silk or your alpaca hats uh, this choose a size based on the instructions for wool but with the ribbing use a, a needle a couple of sizes smaller work the ribbing a little bit tighter maybe even do twisted ribbing and that will help it hold its shape over time because again you really don't want that hat stretching out because it just won't stay on Using any of these fancy fibers, alpaca, silk, cashmere, um, means that you are using potentially more expensive yarn. But this is actually what's so fantastic about hats is that you don't need a lot. There's not a lot of yardage used in a hat project. And they become the ideal way to perhaps indulge in a yarn that is a little bit more expensive or just use up a special skein from your stash. We've all got those single skeins of deliciousness that we're not sure what to do with. A hat's exactly the right answer. 
And these specialty fibers like the silk and the cashmere and the alpaca, they work brilliantly in hats for another reason too. In general, the softer the fiber is, the softer the yarn is, the more delicious it is, the more likely it is to pill. Okay, and something that pills can look pretty tired and pretty worn pretty quickly. But a hat, it's not going to pill a lot. Pilling comes from friction when something is experiences wear, right? A mitten will pill very quickly, a garment potentially under the arms or in the sleeves where they're rubbing, but there's no rubbing with a hat. And so if you've got a fiber that you're concerned is pilly, a hat is a perfect place to use it. So indulge yourself. Those specialty fibers that maybe wouldn't be so great for garment knitting, whether just because the price point is uh, is unachievable or they're just too soft and they're too fragile, a hat is a perfect place to use them. A hat's a perfect place as well to use those um, yarns that maybe are a little bit too... Uh, lively should we say maybe too brightly colored or maybe too outrageous for a garment project this is a uh, hat that I've knitted for uh, it's a gift for a young man in my life a little a little boy and this is perfect this isn't something that we'd necessarily want in a sweater but it's going to be perfect in a hat and so you can use up all of those single skeins of um, self-striping sock yarn that you bought all of the brightly colored stuff that yeah maybe might be too much in a larger project Hats are also a great way of using up leftovers, okay? Uh, if you're not sure if you don't have the full yardage here, I've got a baby hat and I didn't have the full yardage in the pink, so why not add a second color? Or stripes, I'm all about stripes. And here I did a corrugated ribbon cuff. So they're a super way of combining multiple yarns and allowing you to use up leftovers or small quantities of stuff. So they become a great way for spinners too, if you've got little bits of hand spun. And if you're doing something like this, where the stripes are very narrow, here's a dirty secret. It doesn't matter if the two yarns match exactly. So if the gauge of the pink isn't exactly the same as the gauge of the gray, it's not going to affect the fit of the hat in any big way and it's uh, really not going to be detectable either and this is another reason why I like using a secondary color in the cuff because again if you've got a difference in gauge it doesn't matter so they're wonderful projects they're also wonderful projects for playing with new techniques too because they're small right very portable Speaking of new techniques, I've actually started of late knitting my hats from the top down. And this hat was one of the things that inspired it because this hat is cashmere. And I had two skeins of this cashmere given to me as a gift. And I wanted to use up its cashmere. I wanted to use up every last yard of it. So what I did is I worked this hat from the top down. So I was able to get not only exactly the right length of hat, but use all of my yardage so I've got maximum warmth on my ears. Because um, for me, the challenge with hat knitting was always just making sure that the length is exactly right. And if truth be told, I love this mohair number, but if I were to knit it again, I would knit it longer. The length is hard sometimes because you can't assess it as you go. So I started knitting them from the top down and I get a much better fit that way and I can use up leftovers. Let me tell you about the leftovers that I used in this one. This is a plain worsted weight wool. I know you can't see it because it's black, but held together with a lace weight. So it's a plain worsted weight wool held together with a lace weight silk and mohair yarn. This is the warmest hat I have ever made. It's warmer even than the cashmere and that's pretty darn delicious. This is better because what you've got is you've got the denseness of the fabric is provided by the fluffiness of the mohair and the lace weight and mohair and silk and wool together make one of the warmest fabrics that you can possibly wear. And again, this was a top down number so that I could maximize my uh, leftovers and maximize my yardage. And the great thing about it being in a dark color is you can't tell that I ran out of the lace weight about four rounds before the bind off, can you? See, you would never have known if I hadn't told you. So a top-down hat becomes very forgiving. 
If you're interested in learning more about top-down hats, I've recently published a book on that, Custom Fit Hats, but you don't have to do that. There are tons of great hat patterns on Knitty and there's some really fun ones in the new issue and I'm kind of excited about about the snooze one I must confess I think that one's going to be excellent I'm very much looking forward to doing some striping with that one I'm a big fan of stripes but regardless whether you knit one of the knitty hats whether you knit one of my hat patterns or whether you knit one a hat pattern from someone else think about making sure that you're making the right size choice because the hat will fit better be more comfortable last longer in that it won't stretch out and it will keep you warmer, which I think is probably the most important thing. Won't blow off in the winter winds. And think about your yarn choice as well and have fun, indulge yourself a little. Make sure you're using a yarn that's warming. Maybe go stash diving and find something delicious and have fun with some variegated yarns as well. But no matter what you are doing, go forth. And pay attention to your parents because they were right. It's cold. You should be wearing a hat.